Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States Marine Corps, often referred to as simply the Marines, are a maritime land force division of the U.S. Navy. Though they frequently train on land, they are also required to practice special operations at sea. A good example is sea-based sniper training. Snipers are considered extremely important to the Marine Corps' mission. The organization has even set up special scout sniper schools, which lasts eight weeks and has only a 44% graduation rate. Sea-based sniper training is typically done from a moving helicopter in order to create a more realistic and challenging environment for the shooter. With a dummy boat acting as a target, the sniper will practice engaging using rifles, assault weapons, and sometimes even machine guns. Not only does this familiarize them with the guns themselves, but it allows them to see how difficult it can be to shoot accurately while in motion. Another military organization that operates on both land and sea is the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. Its 45,000-plus agents are tasked with protecting the border and enforcing laws related to trade, importation, and immigration. Due to the sheer size of America's borders, these men and women must be well-armed and highly trained. Moreover, a big part of how they train must be done at sea. Indeed, the USC BP will frequently practice maneuvers and pursuit drills using a wide range of watercraft. Most of these boats are designed for high speeds, which helps USCBP officials better intercept fast-moving boats and other bad actors. However, the boats are more than just quick. They are also outfitted with state-of-the-art radar and tracking technology. This equipment helps give them an edge when it comes to detecting and engaging dangerous vessels. As a member of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Customs and Border Protection works very closely with another military agency, the U.S. Coast Guard. This organization's 44,000 active duty personnel are responsible not only for providing security services, but humanitarian and rescue services as well. In fact, the organization saves thousands of lives every year while acting as the first responders of the sea. However, the Coast Guard is still a branch of the military, and as such, recruits must be trained to use a wide range of firearms. This includes practicing the deck-mounted 50 caliber machine guns. Go ahead and unpin. These heavy-duty guns are one of the many weapons the Coast Guard has at its disposal to engage hostile forces at sea. And while the USCG primarily operates by boat, it's crucial that their enlisted men and women are equally formidable on land. That's why each member must undergo basic and advanced firearms training, ensuring they can perform in various scenarios. This includes marksmanship practice with many of the same weapons used by other branches of the U.S. military. No military organization handles just one type of operation.
In fact, versatility has become more and more important to how these modern armed forces members do their jobs. This is clearly the case with the U.S. Coast Guard. As the organization has such a stark focus on rescue operations. Indeed, even auxiliarists are required to participate in weekly training to ensure that they are always mission ready. This nonviolent training includes a lot of hoist drills. These maneuvers focus on the ability of a helicopter rescue crew to successfully deploy and retrieve personnel from dangerous situations using a hoist line and winch system. In many cases, a single crew member will deploy down to retrieve people one by one. In situations where the subject might be too injured or time is a factor, a metal rescue basket or special stretcher also may be used. Marines deployed aboard aircraft carriers are also required to practice insertion techniques on a regular basis. As many Marine missions are heavily focused on incursion and quick response, it's not uncommon for them to enter hostile combat zones by repelling from a moving helicopter. Strong hand, weak hand. However, Marines have learned to utilize their environment so that they can practice these crucial drills without having to go into the air. Fortunately, the deck of an aircraft carrier typically sits about 60 feet above the waterline. And thanks to the elevators already in place to move aircraft from the deck to the hangar bay, these Marines are able to run incredibly authentic drills multiple times a week without disrupting the ship's primary mission. The United States Marine Corps is categorized as a maritime land force. They are a subdivision of the Navy and therefore spend a lot of time training at sea. One of the most important types of training Marines undergo is what's known as low altitude air defense training. This includes tactics designed to protect friendly vessels and vehicles from incoming aircraft, helicopters, and drones. One of the main weapons used in this training is the Stinger missile launcher. This versatile weapon fires a surface-to-air missile that boasts infrared homing technology. This allows the projectile to lock onto the attacking aircraft, dramatically increasing the chances of a direct hit. The Stinger system has been in use since 1981 and remains integral to providing anti-aircraft support to the ground forces. One of the things that separate the Marines from the other branches of the U.S. Armed Forces is that they are considered a quick reaction force. As such, they have many specialized units that can quickly and effectively respond to crises worldwide. Therefore, these men and women must have superior fighting abilities. This is why the Marines invest a lot of time in firearms training. These sort of drills are run by instructors with in-depth knowledge of combat and can accurately prepare the Marines for how they might feel in an actual engagement. Third fire team, where are you going? All right. All right. Understand that, all right? Don't mess that up. Good to go? Yes, yes. Clear and perform functions checks on a weapon. Throughout these exercises, Marines will practice with a range of firearms, 
including handguns and rifles. However, this sort of training is not completely confined to the shooting range. In many cases, Marines will be asked to run courses that combine various engagement scenarios, such as urban breaches, rescue missions, and more. From the Coast Guard to the Army and Marines, the U.S. military is heavily focused on preparedness, especially when it comes to the use of firearms. To the men and women enlisted in the service, weapons training is meant to be taken very seriously. Whether firing a handgun or an infrared-seeking missile, safety is a crucial part of the process. In many cases, these individuals will never need to engage an enemy in combat. However, if and when they do, their training could prove to be a life-saving asset. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.